The Toronto uh, branch of the Ukrainian Canadian Congress started working on Hold the Mod back in 2007. Uh, I was at a at a professional development day when I was still teaching, and uh, there was somebody organizing a genocide course, so I decided to attend. And of course, they didn't have any mention of uh, the Hold the Mod. So I, so I let the UCC know. Uh, we did all kinds of uh, political action, as is necessary. Uh, nobody was interested in talking to us at the beginning, so we ended up bombarding them with letters, and we did get some resolutions. So that was the beginning of the work that we were doing then, and we formed a whole Demont education team here in Toronto. Um, besides that, uh, in 2009, um, I was appointed the chair of the National Hall of the Water Education Committee for UCC, Ukrainian Canadian Congress across Canada, to include the Hall of the Moor in, in curriculum, because I saw that there was nobody coordinating it and it was time to do something about it. In both instances, uh, these two organizations, their main aim was the inclusion of the Hall of the Moor in school curriculum in Canada, and uh, we felt that we had to have a se separate committee from the awareness group, because you needed a group of professionals who knew what they were doing, uh, were, were going to be listened to because they were part of the teachers' associations and also knew how the system worked, including how to deal with the ministries of education. What are the triumphs that we've had across Canada? First of all, the Canadian government recognized uh, the whole of the Mort back in 2008 when Yushchenko visited Canada. And they established a day of remembrance at time, uh, that time of the whole of the Mort in November. This was a unanimous decision by all three political parties within the Canadian Parliament. The next thing was the establishment of Holodomor Memorial Day on the fourth Saturday in November and recognition of the Holodomor by five provinces in Canada, probably the most important ones except for BC, we still have to work on that one. So we have Saskatchewan, Alberta, Manitoba, Ontario and Quebec, once more by unanimous decision by all parties. Work with individual school boards. This was extremely important and that's where we started. We started with the biggest school board in Canada. Toronto District School Board, also the, the most opposing group of people that we could find, I guess, because that's what it ended up being. Uh, the Toronto District School Board, in actual fact, is the fourth largest school board in North America. So it's monstrous. Um, the, what we did um, accomplish was that the Toronto District School Board passed two resolutions. One of them was uh, to hold Hold of War Memorial Day, on an annual basis on the fourth Friday, not the Saturday because there's no school on Saturday, uh, in their schools each year. And we did that. And the second was to um, prepare a unit of two units of study on the whole of the mod. Because when they asked, isn't this whole of the mod being taught somewhere? We said no. And as a result, they did that. So that was the first step. Since then, um, we have been successful in the southern Ontario area of getting uh, the Whole of the Mort Memorial Day announced and placed on the agenda and in school calendars in quite a few boards across this area, like the Toronto Catholic Board, etc. I gave out some handouts to you, and if you take a look, there are instructions. Um, next. Um, instructions on how to do this. How do we get local cities or local people in, in the Ukrainian community to try to get the whole of the mod into the, to get whole of the mod Memorial Day and uh, to encourage teachers to teach about the whole of the mod? There are instructions on how to do this, so you can take a look at those next. A template letter of asking them to do this that we have developed, so it's all there for anybody who wants to use it. Next, and these are some of the school boards that are on board with us, and we. What we're doing, there, I gave out a little flyer with a skeletal hand that Hala Mithrishlan uh, illustrated. If you take a look at that, we print one of these flyers every single year with an announcement that they can read over the PA on Holodomor Memorial Day for each school. We also give suggestions as to where they can get teaching materials. We provide them with uh, suggestions of activities that they could do and a contact information where we could send speakers. So this goes out to the schools that we are working with and that's very important. Every teacher will get one of these flyers, just as they do on the Holocaust. 
and the, we are getting some uh, people coming out. So that's very important. They either can come to the center here for a presentation or we can go to visit them. But the most important thing is the announcement. The word gets out. And that is very, very important. So that has been something that we have done. And as you can see, there are also, not just in the Toronto area, if you go back to the other one, you'll see that uh, we were very lucky to have Edmonton. I've done some workshops in Edmonton, and the Edmonton Catholic School Board is on board with this as well. They're very actively involved in Whole of the Mormon Memorial Day, and also Regina in Saskatchewan have done it, the Catholics. The Catholics are doing very well. If you'll notice that uh, some of the school boards actually asked me for a prayer. So I phoned a priest and we got a prayer. Some of them are doing their own. And I gave you an example of one from the Toronto, District, uh, Toronto Catholic District School Board. So that was interesting too. So they're developing stuff on their own. And in one school, I was told that they did the prayer in Ukrainian. And they had the kids do it. So it was very moving. The next thing, of course, that we've done is the preparation of teaching materials on the whole thing. And, of course, here um, I started doing workshops, and I knew that when you go to a workshop, especially if it's a new topic, they know nothing about it, they won't teach it. So I prepared a lot of handouts, and I gave you lots of handouts. I'm a handout person. I use a lot of paper. So I've uh, developed a workbook that is, uh, I've been using for five years. It's in draft form with a skeletal hand on it. It's on the table over there with other curriculum. It is being published by the uh, Kiyos Press this summer. And uh, I'll be speaking about the workbook itself tomorrow. There are lots of lessons and uh, I'll tell you more about what is actually in it tomorrow. Um, along with that, uh, just a workbook with lesson plans is not good enough. Uh, teachers say they don't know where to go and find information. So I developed a, a, a kit. And the kit is on the um, table as well. It has books in it, it has pamphlets, it has the workbook in it, it has the Harvest of Despair in it, and a CD on the whole of the world as well. So that there's a, a complete package which could be put into a school library or into a history department for use. And uh, we were lucky to get funding for something like that. Uh, Addis to Sudak and his wife provided us with some funding because each one of those kits, to put it together, was $100. And uh, if you want them to teach it, you've got to give it to them. You can't ask them to pay 100 bucks when they don't know what you're doing yet. Right? Eventually, they will want to buy it, but not at the moment. So this is very important. Work with ministries is another thing that has to, have to be done. And we have been working with, uh, you know, to, in order to uh, get them to teach the course, you can go to individual school boards and they can try to find a, a fit within the curriculum, as uh, Mark will probably be telling you uh, later on this afternoon. They can find uh, genocide uh, abuses, uh, uh, human rights abuses, they can find places where to fit it, but the teacher has to look for this. In order to get it taught properly, you have to go to the source. The ministry guidelines that are prepared on each course, they have examples of what to teach in brackets. We decided as a group that we had to visit with the Ministry of Education here in Ontario who were going through curriculum review. And since 2009, we have been working diligently, meeting with different ministers, with the senior staff, and we have been working. Um, just on January the 17th, we had a meeting with Laurel Broughton, the former Minister of Education, who promised us that you have done as a community an excellent job and you are definitely in the curriculum. I have yet to see the draft document, so we almost uh, didn't believe her because I've gone through four Ministers of Education and so far. We're waiting for the new curriculum to come out in September. So that's going to be important. Why it's important? No textbook is going to enter your information unless it's in the curriculum guide. The authors of textbooks read the curriculum guide and then they place the materials in there. So this was very important. At the moment, Saskatchewan is doing the same thing. They've started their curriculum review. And in October, I visited Saskatchewan along with Mr. Puderak and Kathy Chabelle and others. We visited the Minister of Education, Marchuk, and uh, the Deputy Premier. And also we visited uh, ministry staff and discussed with them possibility of putting Holodomor into the actual curriculum, which is very important. Now, Alberta already has it in the curriculum in specific places, and, and there is a local community organization that we've set up, a Holodomor education or committee there as well that we've set up, and I work with them, and uh, they have it in the curriculum, and I know that Vida is going to be telling you a lot more about the Manitoba curriculum, which is also in. 
So these are some of the problems, uh, provinces that are, that where it is working. Now, in-service teacher training. In order to do something properly, teachers have to be trained. They, they uh, need information. So I have been doing this since uh, 2007 at various uh, places. The Canadian Center for Genocide Studies started in the summer of 2007. Mm -hmm. Professor Sirbin and I and Hylet Mitrishan did a presentation for a number of teachers across Canada. OHASTA is the Ontario History and, and Social Studies Teachers Association. It's the largest uh, gathering of history teachers in the country. I did a workshop for them in 2008. Um, SAG conference, that's uh, Manitoba, wide uh, professional development uh, conference as well. I did a conference in 2011, and Hadid Mitrishan was there too. She did it for elementary grades, and Hadid did two workshops this year there as well. And then Edmonton Getka is the Greater uh, Edmonton Teachers Conference Association. I just finished doing a, a presentation for them there. Uh, I was shocked. Uh, 106 people showed up to one and 96 to the other. I ran out of teaching materials. <laughs> it was, you know, that was interesting. So this is on, on the go. And also some presentations to various school boards. I visit schools. Other people visit schools with me as well. We send speakers. Very important to train the teachers. But the most important thing is to not just have one or two people doing it. We now have to train the trainers so that they can go in with PowerPoints as well. And uh, there will be a PowerPoint in my workbook as well. <laughs> so this kind of thing has to happen, and it's very important. The writing competition, we, we are on our third writing competition, and we're very pleased that Saskatchewan has its own writing competition based on what we have done, and that the Americans are doing this as well. Um, I'm going to be handing out a, a form for you about this present uh, writing competition. It's to students from 14 to 19 who can write an essay, do a, sk a skit, a drama, poetry, etc. that we're going to um, do. All right. Uh, next, the creation of REC. This has been an important triumph as far as I'm concerned because there was no place to sort of hang your hat or for teachers to go to a specific organization to get information. All right, next. What are the challenges? Well, each province has its own unique system of education in Canada. So curriculum needs a little different. The uh, next one is uh, local hold the more education committees have to exist in order to be able to know what to do in each province and to see who you have to see, how to write curriculum, and to be familiar with curriculum. And we're trying to uh, set up these kind of committees. Next, uh, we need to educate politicians all the time, school officials, about what the whole of the more is about. And for that, we require resources, and we have a package for, that we also um, hand out to politicians as we are trying to familiarize them with what the, the uh, whole of the more is all about. Next. Uh, consensus. We have a problem with this, with numbers. Though, you know, it seems the Ukrainians seem to argue about this. I go and do a presentation, nobody ever asks me about numbers. I talk to teachers, they don't ask me about numbers. The Ukrainians are stuck on the numbers issues. And so I think this is something we have to deal with. We can't deal with, uh, you know, direct deaths versus uh, non-births and things like that. We have to get the uh, academics to come down to some kind of a consensus so we could have a consensus. But I know that Professor Sabin has told me that's going to take years. All right, next. Uh, terminology, the lexicon we use. What do we call it? Hold them what? It does that include only the famine? Does that include other things that have happened to the Ukrainian nation? Professor Sirbin will be addressing that this evening as the keynote speaker. Um, more teaching materials are needed for all grade levels. Some areas require teaching materials in the French language, which we'll have to have to do in Canada. Excellent website for teachers. Mark can, keeps telling me that that's the key to success. So that's what we're going to be working on, and that's very important. Genocide courses in schools are already available. The genocide course that the Toronto District School Board brought in, eliminated, did not include the whole of the board. And we are going after them. It's been three years, it's actually four years since they've had it. It's a very popular course and all over across the country people are buying rights to use the course because it's a locally developed course. They have not included us. They promised to have a review, they haven't done it. Next. And a common understanding is what is meant by Holodomor. I've already mentioned that, and Professor Sirbin will be addressing that today. 
uh, coordinated effort across the country. Do you know when I came in to, uh, to speak to the Minister of Education in Saskatchewan, it was nice for him to know that I've already, already visited the minister in uh, Ontario. And this is important. Canadian Museum of Human Rights. You know, in Winnipeg, we're getting a big entity that is federally funded. <coughs> and they have promised they were going to have the whole of the modern interment. And I have dealt with the chief research director. And today, the Ukrainian community is up in arms because we are not prominently or permanently going to be in there at the moment. So this is an issue that has to be dealt with. Few professionals to do in-service for teachers on the whole of the mod, as I've mentioned before, we have to have sessions just to train teachers. And I'm pleased to see Oksana Kulinich, who's not a history teacher, but she's doing a fantastic job, which means we can do it, regardless of what you teach, even mathematics. <laughs> and more resources required, of course. Challenges, we need people who are willing to deal with the school boards, etc. Holodomor denial is a thriving business, even to this very day, as we know. And uh, no feature films available on the Holodomor. Wouldn't that be something, eh? Schindler's List style. We would be very successful. Okay, next. So suggestions, get involved. Active citizens are the cornerstone, uh, cornerstone of democracy. Join your local Holodomor education team and make things happen. We owe it to ourselves and the generations of unborn and tortured souls of our brethren. I am only one, but I am one. I cannot do everything, but I can do something. And by God, I will not step away from what I can do. Thank you very much.